Taj before and in, in during the service where we have the most people. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? What are you looking for is the question asked by Jesus to those men who decided to leave John and baptize the John the Baptist and follow him. A profound question, what are you looking for? Many of us are searching for something, but when asked what exactly it is we're looking for, we do not have a clue as to what it is. As we gather here today or on the 15th of January, gathered as one church, Jesus asked St. Joseph, what are you looking for? As we ponder this question, let us look back on 2016 as we search for the answer to Jesus' question this morning. 2016 was an, an extraordinary year in leadership, as the Vestry and I faced many challenging decisions. We were able to handle these chain challenges because of the foundation we set for ourselves during the annual Vestry retreat, which took place in February of last year. The retreat centered on building trust and getting to know one another. We took time to have one-on-one -on -one conversations, sharing parts of our life stories and values which have helped to shape who we are as individuals. What we discovered during this time was the commonality in our values as well as in our upbringing. We also began a conversation on what God was calling us as a vestry to do in 2016. Overall, the retreat helped us to work as one vestry whose common goal was to do God's work and be faithful to the members of St. Joseph's. In March, members of the vestry and I did a walkthrough around the property. We took an inventory of all the building and property issues that needed to be addressed. The result was a 10-page report which was given to the property committee to begin to address. You will hear more about this property report during the annual meeting from the chair of the Buildings and Grounds Committee. In March, the church received a final notice from the City Department of Finance regarding back taxes owed by the church that amounted to over $300,000. The notice was brought to my attention and subsequently Robert Fardella, the chancellor of the diocese, an investigation as to why the church property would be on the tax roll was begun in March. During the investigation into the property tax issue, it was discovered that the church property has two block numbers, block one, which is the church and school, and block 15, which is the parsonage. Prior to 2013, the tax exemption forms were completed and filed properly. During the transitional period, of Father Anthony and Father Vitae, Block 1 was taken off the property tax exemption list for the city. And since 2013 er and every subsequent year, Block 1 had been incurring property tax and penalties for failure to pay. The diocese contracted with a law firm on our behalf to help us through the process. The firm was able to remove the lien and restore our tax exempt status the Department of Finance restored the exemption on Lot 1 and retroactivated it from July 1, 2013, and thus removing all charges. Amen. March was a busy month. I was asked to attend a meeting with the bishop, the canon to the ordinary, the chancellor, the finance officer of the diocese, and the real estate manager to address both the property issues and financial debt facing the school. The meeting was productive as we, there was a commitment on all sides to work collaboratively to address these issues. Following this meeting, Father Andrew Durbich, the real estate manager of the diocese, met with the vestry and I to discuss the process of moving forward to obtain the certificate 
of occupancy, the CFO, for the second floor addition to the school property. During the meeting, it was discussed that there were no records to indicate that the second floor of the school built in 2001 was inspected and approved, approved and given a CFO. This was not in compliance with New York City Department of Buildings. The risk to the church would be that our insurance on the building would be invalidated, creating a liability issue for the parish and likelihood of fines to the church that would be at the rate of 14 times the fee, which is between $2,000 and $3,000. Therefore, the diocese engaged the service of a code specialist expediter, the company called Code. The goal is to have the building inspected by architects to ensure safety, to have the Department of Buildings inspect and acquire the CFO. The process could, at the time they were telling us, take two to three weeks. In the event of that CFO not being obtained, the code company will apply to have the permit reinstated and that is valid for two years. If a permit is not reinstated, a new application to build has to be filed with the DOB. That may result in being forced to rebuild at a current, rebuild or get the building up to code for the current codes of this year. There must be an application of approval for the fire alarms and the place of assembly, namely the cafeteria, the gymnasium, and the church. And it was discovered that during our research time that the fire alarms that we nicely see or the smoke detectors that we nicely see throughout the property were not connected to anything. <laughs> the diocese will undertake financial responsibility for obtaining the CFO and work to be completed. You will hear uh, later a letter at the meeting, a report from Father Durbridge as to where we are in this process. Finally, in May, the Executive Committee of the Vestry, which consisted of the two wardens, the treasurer, the buildings and ground chair, the vestry clerk, and myself, were asked to attend another meeting with the bishop and his executive staff. The purpose was to discuss the future of the school as the preliminary results had come in on the progress of the CFO. You will see later in the financial report a financial statement showing that the diocese has given a total of $317,882 in an effort to keep the school open for the last four years. It was determined that the lack of a CFO, a proper fire alarm system by, which by, by code, a New York State code we must have if we're running a school, and the lack of financial stability warranted the closing of the school until these issues were addressed. The vestry and I made the decision to close the school at the end of May. Teachers, administration, administrators, church members, and parents were all informed of this decision, and the school was closed. The school closed its doors June 30th, 2016. There was a one-day retreat for the head of the church organizations held in February. This was led by Leanna Mullings, a consultant for the diocese. This retreat was an opportunity for those in attendance to share the story of St. Joseph's, to express their hopes for the future of St. Joseph's, and to recommit to seeing those hopes come to fruition at St. Joseph's. This retreat was well received by everyone who attended. It, is, it was my hope that the whole church would have been able to participate in a church-wide retreat so that all could have the same opportunity. However, due to an unforeseen event, Mrs. Mullins was unable to lead this retreat for the congregation. It is still my hope to reschedule a parish-wide retreat in 2017, as every member is voice is important to be heard as we gather to shape the future of St. Joseph's. During the early part of the year, we were informed that two of our vestry members who were on staff at the school could not be both employed by the church and members of the vestry. This caused a legal problem. 
they would have to choose one. And so two vacancies became open. These vacancies were filled by Robert Saunders and Hickman Simmons. In 2016, we upgraded the office equipment on both, for both the school and the church. We installed new camera systems, a phone system, a copier system, and a financial system, which will reduce on, in the long term our financial costs in both the office, office of the school and of the church. As you will hear in the treasurer's report, we have added a new position, a financial assistant to help input and keep track of the day-to-day -day financial records of the church. The church office was reorganized, filing system upgraded, and is once again functioning at full capacity. We regularized the process of baptism, funerals, and the hall rental. The overall church calendar of events is scheduled and organized from the church office, and I want to take this opportunity to stress to those organizations planning for events for the church that you must work with the church office to place your events on the calendar. Do not assume that the church space is available as there are a number of events for 2017 already on the calendar. In September, all of the staff members were given letters of agreements and job descriptions of, as to their roles and responsibilities working for St. Joseph's. In order to be in compliance with the national canons of the Episcopal Church, all eligible staff working 1,800 hours a year and over were put on a lay pension plan for the Episcopal Church. We changed payroll company at the end of November, opting to use the diocesan law of Diocese of Long Island payroll system. This move allows the church to offer its employees direct deposit, flex spending accounts, transportation fringe benefit accounts, and AFLEX supplement insurance. These programs were, are offered to employees at their own expense. Employees are also now able to enroll in the diocesan lay employee health benefit plans at their own expense. Worship in 2016 was exciting with the various services offered throughout the year. During the Lenten season, we studied the book of Passions for Pilgrimage, a les lesson's note for the journey home by Alan Jones. Holy Week was truly a holy one from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. The services were uplifting. Revival Week was another week that moved many people's spirits. All Souls Day was an opportunity for us to remember our loved ones who passed away. And I think that the doves added something special to that service. Harvest Sunday was, as usual, wonderful, breaking fresh bread. Uh, the Christ, body of Christ is always a special moment. And I like to say I remember some comments that I received down the, uh, the line when people wanted their bread. Some wanted big pieces. <laughs> Avid Lessons and Carols was a peaceful and reflective service which came on the heels of Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day services. And I look forward to another season of beautiful worship. Spirituality is something that we are all called to develop as Christians. In October, we added yet another opportunity to study with the scripture with the Adult Sunday School, where we are currently studying the book of Job. I believe that those who attend will agree with me that our conversations that we are having are both challenging and thought-provoking. There was also a 12-week program called Question of Faith, which was a free curriculum offered by Forward Movement. There were a total of six participants throughout the 12 weeks who wrestled with various questions and topics such as, does God answer our prayers? And where do we go when we die? There were several baptisms last year, and baptism will continue to be the first Sunday of each month during and during the Easter vigil. Those seeking baptism can receive an application from the church. And please note that baptism class is necessary for all parents, godparents, and those old enough to answer the question of baptism on their own. Confirmation is also in school swing. 
Several of our young people are taking the next step in their faith journey, and God willing, they will be confirmed this May. St. Joseph said goodbyes to several church members and extended family members in 2016. During the annual meeting, those who died in 2016 will be remembered in a moment of silence. I stated in my address last year that I hit the ground running as I began to work with the school. I can tell you I never stopped running until the end of the summer. And as I start, stated above, the school had to close for various reasons. However, before that decision was made, I had put together a school committee that was diligently working on restruct the restructuring of the school. The committee members consisted of vestry members, parents, teachers, members of the community, representatives from the diocese, and representatives from the Jamaica Deanery. The committee was tasked to look at four integral areas of the school, finance, policy, curriculum, and human resources and professional development. The committee was subdivided within these four areas. Our goal for the year was to examine the current state of the school and create a five-year strategic plan that would have placed the school on better footing. The school committee was slated to function as the school board for the next two years when it, at that time we would have been in a better position to restore the school board. We did manage to put together a five-year financial plan for the school that was in the process of being reviewed when the decision was made to close. Closing down a school is not an easy task. Termination letters and unemployment applications were given to the faculty in June. We retained the principal until the end of August to help organize student files, all the information on current students, were properly accounted for. By law, we must archive student files for 50 years. We retain the office staff to help create a filing system on all the students who pass through the doors of the school. At the end of this January, we will be down to one person in the school office until the decision is made on next steps. Many are wondering whether the school will reopen in 2017. The reality is the average parochial school teacher's base salary is $53,000 a year plus benefits, which means one teacher will cost $80,000 to $90,000 a year. If you multiply the numbers by grades pre-K to 8th, you will see that we are not in the financial position at this time to reopen the school. However, I do believe that we can run a successful after-school program, and we are currently in the research stage as to what it will take to run an after-school program and what will, our program, what will make our program stand out among all the programs in the area. The goal is to build a strong after-school program and get enough parents interested in reopening the school. From there, we will build the school one grade. Thank you for your tireless effort to ensure that ministry of God continues in this place. May God continue to bless this faith community of St. Joseph, and may we always enter to worship and leave to serve. Respectfully yours, Mother Ellis. Thank you very much.